Uh, thank you, CJ. <clears throat> the issue is, what are the legal consequences of not holding a presidential election in each constituency? Apart from the pleadings and submissions before court, we take judicial notice of the fact that there was violence experienced in some parts of the country on 26 October 2017. The violence was more pronounced in the 25 constituencies where it was not possible to conduct an election. These 25 constituencies are considered or perceived to be strongholds of NASA, whose candidates had opted not only to withdraw from the elections, but rallied their supporters to boycott the election. We take judicial notice of the fact that in those constituencies, as well as parts of Nairobi, officials of the second respondent were physically prevented from accessing the polling stations to which they had been assigned for the purposes of conducting the election. In response to our question as to the cause of the said violence, Ms. Julie Soweto, counsel of the second and third petitioners, submitted that it did not matter who caused the violence. In counsel's view, the fact that the violence occurred in certain parts of the country was enough to vitiate the election. It was not, in our view, a meritorious response by learned counsel. Violence in any form, by any person or agency, whether private or state, against any person, community, institution, or establishment constitutes a travesty of justice and of the rule of law. Violence undermines the democratic process and makes a mockery of the Pacific resolution of disputes, which is one of the hallmarks of our progressive constitution. Unchecked and unbridled episodes of violence are a sure recipe for the disintegration of a nation and the destruction of a constitutional order. This court stands not for lending legitimacy to any acts of violence as a device for settling disagreements or agreements. Were any state agencies such uh, as the police who are allowed to resort to a limited measure of force to prevent crime, protect lives and property, and quell violent insurrection to deploy excessive force resulting in injury, destruction of property or death, they certainly would be undermining the authority of the Constitution. By the same token, where civilians, for whatever reasons, resort to acts of violence and intimidation with the object of preventing others from exercising their democratic right to vote or impeding election officials from executing their constitutional responsibilities, such civilians will engage themselves in the atavistic path of undermining the authority of the Constitution. The Constitution categorically says that every person has an obligation to respect, uphold, and to defend it. The terms of Article 81 of the Constitution, read in proper context, must be understood to mean that no person, candidate, political party, party agent or supporter, or state agency is to resort to acts of violence, intimidation, improper influence or corruption to defeat, to defeat the will of the people exercising their democratic right. The said provision cannot be read as sanctioning or lending legitimacy to acts of violence and intimidation to achieve the invalidation of an election. If we were to hold otherwise, the authority of the Constitution would be surrendered to cynical acts of violence. All one would need to do is to instigate violence in any corner of the Republic during the presidential election and thereafter petition this court to nullify the election. Those who intentionally instigate and perpetrate violence must not plead the same violence as a ground for nullifying an election. The right to vote is enshrined in Article 38 of the Constitution. And the Elections Act also provides that every adult citizen shall exercise the right to vote. We have already established that the presidential election could not be held in certain constituencies because of the threat of insecurity caused by violent demonstrations. In that regard, the IEBC invoked Section 55B of the Elections Act, postponing the conduct of the repeat election to 28th of October 2017. The IEBC is empowered by the Elections Act to postpone an election in a constituency, county or ward, in circumstances specified by the Act. However, there is a non obstante, which is a nonetheless qualification, proviso to that provision. The Commission may, if satisfied with the results of of the elections, if satisfied that the results of the elections will not be affected by voting in the area in respect of which substituted dates have been appointed, direct that a return of the elections be made. 
and we have spelt out the terms of Section 55B and made this observation. Inherent in the statutory provisions are certain vital points. One, the Commission is a constitutional body under the Constitution to conduct elections. Two, Article 82 of the Constitution empowers Parliament to enact legislation to provide for the conduct of elections. Three, it follows then, sorry, Section 55B therefore confers upon the Commission a discretion to consider the circumstances necessitating postponement of an election in an election unit such as the likelihood of a serious breach of peace. There is a low threshold placed upon the Commission in exercising its discretion to postpone an election. Mere apprehension of the breach of peace may trigger the exercise of this power. In the instant case, it was actual and not imagined threat of violence in the affected areas. Therefore, the Commission's actions were not outside the contemplation of the law. It follows that Section 55B is a normative derivative of the Constitution and next to Article 82 of the Constitution to aid the conduct of elections in line with the principles of the electoral system and the prerequisites of voting in Articles 81 and 86. Section 55B has a clause allowing the Commission to direct the return if it's satisfied that the outcome will not be affected by the voting in that area. We have listed also the Regulation 87, which also further provides for that. In particular, it states, provided that the chairperson of the commission may declare a candidate elected as president before all constituencies have delivered their results, if it is in the opinion of the commission that the results that have not been received will not make a difference with regards to the winner. In the present case, voters from 25 constituencies did not vote due to politically instigated violence. There were also individuals who opted to boycott the election. The IABC then designated a different day. However, even on this day, elections could not take place. Consequently, upon tallying and verification of results, the commission declared the winning candidate president despite the electorate in 25 constituencies not having voted. It is clear that the Commission made its declaration pursuant to the Constitution and pursuant to the law. On that basis, even though those voters in the 25 constituency did not vote, the declaration of the results by the Commission was in perfect accord with the terms of the Constitution. Thank you very much, Justin Joki. And now...